mind and the staff at Alvaro Sink. He's been to Memphis several times. He's uh, paddled in the middle of the Mississippi River with me. We intended to do that today, but the flight was a little bit late. Uh, but he's been a great friend. He loves coming to Memphis, and he's a great friend of Memphis. Conrad Anker. The next presentation is about Meru, which is a uh, peak in the Kekotri region of India. And um, the Indian Himalaya is um, above Delhi, and it's the source of the uh, Ganga River. So it's a very sacred place for the Hindu religion. Um, my first time I was there was in 2003, and we had a good time, but we didn't make it up to the top. And we got up to about, um, we got right there, and then we were denied. And 2008 came back with, um, armed with more equipment, so to say. And so instead of going alpine style, which is what we tried in 2003, which was basically a small stuff sack, five days of fuel, three days of food, and a lot of uh, moxie and motivation to go up there, we decided that we're going to go up with a portal edge, which is a uh, cliff tent that you can then put onto the side of the mountain and live in. And you get all your equipment, you go out, and you do these really wild, crazy climbs in the middle of nowhere where rescue doesn't really happen. You have to be uh, really on your own. And when I was first getting started in um, climbing, I, one of the old climbers was like, well, youth, it's not the mountains, it's the people. And I was like, huh, what's he talking about? He must be over 40. And of course, I was a young guy full of myself. And I thought, well, it's all about me going over there and climbing these peaks. And, and we think we're all burly and everything. We've got modern nylon-based clothing and everything. And then the pilgrims are there. and. The women are in a sari, which is about seven yards of um, cloth that's wrapped up in a very specific way. It's a very elegant dress, but it's not nearly as warm as sleeping in a sleeping bag. So, of course, we felt like we were lightweight because we had all this junk and all these accoutrements with us when we end up hanging out with uh, the sadhu, who is at the village um, at Tabuban, which is the meadow that's created by two medial moraines underneath Shivling. And this guy lives in a cave, and when it's sunny out, he hangs out there with his loin cloth. And um, when it's not sunny, he lives in his cave. And the whole plan was to live in our tent as we go along and sort of inchworm our way up there. And so we ended up spending five days living in this portal edge, rationing our food. So we started out with eight days of food, and oh, after about day two, you start rationing it. And that's really the best part of these climbing expeditions, it really makes suffering legit. Because you can't, if you go out and pretend you're suffering in modern America, people are like, oh, okay, the funny farm's over there, or you've got something wrong with you. But when you go out to do these climbs, it's like, well, how much can you suffer, and do you enjoy it? So um, I guess I just have a high pain threshold, and it, and it ends up being really enjoyable. But um, the difficulty and danger are two different things. And when you combine them both on one climb, then that's a different one. So this one was a very steep climb, whereas Everest is it's just how how well can you survive with the lack of oxygen, because it's really not that steep. Please, don't you know? Pardon me? I was the man that found the body of George Mallory in 1999. And the clip of the film that we saw here at the beginning is um, The Wildest Dream. And, you can rent it on Netflix and bring it in and watch it. So it explains that story. Sort of, yeah, you can rent it. Yeah, you can probably stream it on your Xbox or something. Show your mom how to do that. <laughs> so a lot of these people that are going from Mount Everest, they would probably be shooting uh, the white Siberian tiger or rhinoceroses in Africa. So they want this big ego thing. And so Everest is a great trophy. What would you say is your favorite destination? My favorite destination would probably be Shelby Farm State Park. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, I love it. And actually, I live in the moment. This is the best moment of my life right now, and it's happening today, and it'll be the best moment in 15 minutes. So I'm always optimistic about life and where it is, and rather than saying it's going to be great when I when I when I'm successful or when something happens. You do like mountains, though. I recommend visiting the Himalayas in your, uh, as a life goal because it's um, the youngest in, uh, mountain range on our planet. It's 60 million years old and it's unweathered and just still growing and just incredible. They're, they're like the thunderheads we saw out here this afternoon that are towering up except they're 8,000 meter peaks. Really beautiful. We are